Hey everyone, Mr. Bomb Collectibles, and I am back with another Hot Toys 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review, and today is another exciting one, and for me, it's the RoboCop 3 diecast figure from Hot Toys. Um, I have the first one in my collection, and I'm so excited to take a look at this, but before we begin, please consider dropping a like on this video, and consider subscribing if this is your first time, and drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts, if this is something that you got or you passed on, because I know there was a lot of uh, comments made about this when it first came out, where uh, collectors were a little iffy about the paint color and some who even backed out on it because you know they didn't like the final product but we're going to dive into that but if this is uh, your first die cast robocop figure you're going to be blown away by this one packaging is similar to the original the way that it opens up but uh great art box great design to it if you guys see my previous videos you kind of know what i do with my art boxes and my uh, shipper so you know this is going to probably suffer the same fate if you don't know you can check out some of my other uh, youtube shorts on that but when you open this up uh, multi clamshell so you have the styrofoam with, that protects the figure and then underneath that is a plastic clamshell that has all the accessories uh, here you get the standard uh, you know instruction manual as it comes and this is the bottom shell which has the jetpack um, and the base which we'll take a look at but the first accessory we're going to dive into which is specific to robocop 3 is the I call it the like the multi-purpose machine gun. It's a really great looking piece, a very distinguishing piece. It has a ballpoint joint on the end, is how it attaches to the figure, which you'll we'll see a little bit later. But this is one of the two distinguishing factors of this figure, in my opinion, um, for the RoboCop 3. And it also comes with the uh, the missile effect, which I love, that just pops right in there, just pressure, pressure fitted. Um, you can take the jet off of it the little missile and actually just have that in there but i have it with the smoke effect it looks awesome and there's a little slot there that actually slides in the machine magazine it's painted in solid black there's not much like detailing to it in terms of the color they just basically it's, it's all black it's pretty straightforward um the missile effect it gets the job done there's really not like any multi-layer detailing or paint work on it it's just basically all black and then you have the smoke effect with the missile itself but still an absolutely great piece and how it's going to be displayed with my figure as well. Uh, the next are these two little clips. They go on the jetpack, which keep um, that gets strapped to Robo's arms. We'll take a look at those a little bit later. Uh, one of the two things I'm disappointed with is the base comes with a regular hexagon base with a crotch grabber. Uh, for a figure like this, I kind of wish we had a dynamic flight pole, something like that with Iron Man figures to give it a better idea of flight. But needless to say... And I think the main feature of this, which is fantastic, is the jetpack. There's so much detail on this thing. I mean, you can spend so much time looking at the ins and outs. Hot Toys really spared no expense with this um, in terms of there's detailing on the underside and on the backside. So they kind of really made a good conscious effort, depending on how you want this displayed, either on the figure or off the figure. Um, they made sure every ounce of this has all the detailing. Now, the one thing you really do got to be careful with is the rotating joints on this. There are multiple points of articulation and very easy to break. As a matter of fact, um, mine did break at one point which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, nothing that's some super glued it and fix, but needless to say, the detailing on this thing is amazing, and you have to be so, so careful with applying this to your figure just because there's so many articulated points um, with this piece. I can see a lot of people kind of breaking various points on this. Um, but the next point we're going to get into are his guns. comes with two guns, like the original, one plastic, one die cast. The die cast one I always stick in the arm, and the plastic one is the one that you use for the articulated fingers. Uh, just for posing purposes. Um, detailing work on is pretty basic, all black. Uh, not much there to speak about, but nonetheless really great. And you also get the three face plates of Peter Weller, who was not the RoboCop in part three. He, re you know, he was in the first one and then reprised his role for the second. Paint application on these look fantastic with the different facial expressions. And once again, and if, if this is your first RoboCop, it's a plus to get the Peter Weller uh, face plates. Now, my other downside to this, which once again, if you have the first RoboCop, it's a direct copy, are the hands. You get two fists, two articulated hands, and then the one with the fist with the um the, the needle, the stick coming out of it. Um, I wish we got sculpted hands for this release, just because if anyone has the first one, posing the gun in these little articulated fingers is an absolute pain in the ass. Um, the gun always falls out. You got to really get it, you know, fitted the right way. I just wish that we got a sculpted gun hand for robocop but as i said it's really you know they're taking the original die cast and just kind of giving a little spruce up but this is the figure out of the box um in some in my basic lighting we're going to do an outdoor 
lighting review on this as well. Um, one of the biggest features of this figure was obviously the paintwork, which was a bit of controversy for uh, collectors. And I have him side by side here with my original first one. The uh, original is on the left, the new one's on the right. You can definitely tell there's a little bit more blue in there with some purple highlights. But as I point out, those purple highlights were also in the original figure. It just depends on how the lighting plays. But the figure itself, like I said, you're going to be blown away if this is your first RoboCop figure. And I highly advise if you're someone that's on the fence about this and you don't own a previous version, I would absolutely jump on this. And what I'm doing here is kind of highlighting the parts that are purple in the biceps you see there around the collarbone. There's a little bit more purple highlights that were added to the figure. And I'm just kind of going in and just kind of taking a look at some of the points. I'm actually using the one hand with the pointer to kind of give, give you guys an idea of where I'm seeing the purple highlights on the figure kind of going from head to toe. And they're just little, you know, little highlights all over the figure. Nothing too crazy, but they do stand out in different lighting aspects, even down to the feet. Um, there's different shades of purple. But that being said, um, once I go through the review of the RoboCop 3, I'll move over to the original and the original has some of those same highlights in the toe area. It may not pick up so well on camera, but in person, there's definitely still some purple highlights. Not as evident compared to the new release, but there. I would say the biggest difference is, is going to be more of a shade of blue on the newer one, which they were trying to replicate. Um, my theory about this is I would actually consider this new RoboCop more of a RoboCop 2 if those who know the backstory, the first version of the suit was more of a metallic, and then he went more blue in the second movie, and then in the third movie, they tried dialing it back to the original metallic. So I'll have some photos from the movie as well, but you'll see that, in my opinion, it's kind of like what they did with the John Wick Chapter 2 figure, where they gave us John Wick from Chapter 2, but they also gave you accessories from the first movie to kind of make it a hybrid. And so that's just something I'm going to touch on a little bit later. But here, we're just going to show you real quick how to pop the gun on. Once again, once you remove the arm and the forearm, it's just a ball joint. You just pressure fit it right in, snug fit. The gun looks fantastic. I mean, this is how mine's going to be displayed. And then the same thing with the smoke effect. The smoke effect on the end, there's a little, um, I'm going to focus in here. Uh, nice detailing here, like I said. But the smoke effect, there's a little, you know, a little hollow out point. There's a little pin inside the, uh, you know, inside the gun. You just pressure fit it. You can put it in there with the smoke effect, or you can take the smoke out and put the missile in there as well. So you have two different options. But like I said, it looks really fantastic. It's painted all black. There's no other really kind of paint weathering to kind of give it to another, you know, make it, another, you know, another level. But uh, nevertheless, it's a fantastic accessory. Um, if you already have an original RoboCop, like I said, like I have, you'll probably be displaying this one on your. Uh, your uh, figure itself here i just want to show you guys if you have not had before how to actually install the gun the thigh uh, piece just pops open you slide in the die cast gun and then the gun closes back up and the, the thigh uh thigh plate just closes over and locks in place it takes a little minute to do it but it clips in and that's how it's concealed that's how i keep mine so the die cast weapon i keep inside the thigh and then you have the plastic one to display as needed uh, the jetpack here, I just want to show you guys one of the pistons that you see here on the left side, the right side that actually bro uh, broke off a little bit of a, like a screw fell out, I think. So I just slid this back in, as you'll see, very fragile. Once again, there's a lot of moving parts to this jetpack. So you see it slide in that little piston there that controls the, the right, uh, I guess, the little jet. And there's a screw that slides in. So I'm just going to put a little bit of crazy glue in there and hold that in place. But that was the only thing that popped off. Um, from the packaging. I just wanted to give you guys an update on that. And then, like I said, the jetpack, it's magnetic, so it magnetizes to the back. And then there's those two clamps that clamp down just for aesthetics. But this thing is fantastic once it's on him. He is a heavy, heavy boy. A lot of moving pieces to this. The you know, the jet, the little thrusters there, they rotate, the pistons rotate, as you can see. Um, that's after I had it glued back together. And the arm pieces as well are functional. So that those little black clips that I showed you in the beginning, they install on both arms of RoboCop, and then they actually clip onto the figure. You have to be careful about not scratching the paintwork on there, but in the instructions, it shows you how to do that. Uh, and for the other side, the left side with the gun, there I, I went online to do some research, 
there really isn't a clear way to actually display this with the jet on. Right, as you can see, I just kind of laid it over. And when it's displayed in your collection, you're not going to know the difference. But I did not attempt to use the other black clip. I don't think it will work on this. So if you're using the machine gun arm, um, as you see here, you're not going to be able to install that little black clip to hold the other piece in place. It's just too small. It's going to be used with the regular hand. So as you can see here, I just like kind of laid it over. And once it's in a muse in a pose in my collection, um, you're not going to know the difference. It's going to stay put the way that it is. And like I said, this is the figure itself on the rotating base just doing a little bit of an overview once again this is a figure i had no doubt about i absolutely love this figure robocop 3 was actually my first introduction to robocop it's a very campy movie you know corny movie yeah, it's not a favorite amongst many fans in my opinion number one two and three are the best in that order um however if you are a first-time owner it's a slam dunk that you're getting the Peter Weller faceplate. I know um, some other people would actually have the original actor that played him in the third movie, but um, in this case, you know, the Peter Weller, you can't go wrong with having the faceplate, and you're going to have multiple posing options. So for me, it was a great opportunity to get another RoboCop because I can display him with the jetpack and the missile arm, how I'm going to do that in my display. And you can see behind, I have the original with his gun out um, with a walking pose. That's how I had him in my display. But the biggest thing, like I said, is it's a great looking figure. I do think that the paintwork situation that people talked about was overly exaggerated where there was people seeing the final production photos because I know the original photos, he was much heavier uh, blue and purple and hot toys actually toned it down and so they just seemed to you know kind of drew a line in the sand with the collectors where some just didn't like the way the paint was the reality is is that you're never going to get the paint 100 right translated into figure form but i think hot toys did a right move about toning it down a little bit um i do think the prototype photos were a little little more inaccurate being too heavily blue and they dialed it down with the purple highlights. I think it's an absolute home run here. Absolute home run. So I think that, um, you know, those who kind of voice their opinion about it, a little, little over-exaggeration, I think. And just the final walkthrough, and I'm going to post some photos here that you can see. This is an outdoor natural sunlight, just comparing both figures. And as you can see here, the first photo I have, this one is from RoboCop 1, where you can see the figure is more metallic. Um, and then so is the next photo. And what's interesting, as you can see here, there's a little bit of purple highlight behind the back of his helmet, which is interesting. And then when you move to RoboCop 2, which is right here, here's where the more introduction of the blue is more prominent. Um, and then also even here, another shot of the purple on the back of the helmet. This is when he was on the truck with Kane fighting him. And then moving into the third movie, you can see here, this is him in the police station where he's a little bit more toned back to met, uh, metallic. And then I have one more final photo. I think this is introduction here into the third movie. Uh, you see there definitely much more metallic there. So it's just to give me an idea of how the color of the suit fluctuated between movie to movie. And in my opinion, um, I think Hot Toys, no problem with this. I mean, even in some photos, you can't tell which one is which. And like I said, you see the purple here is evident in the biceps and the collar. And then even on the other figure, I still see the purple highlights there as well. Um, so it's just giving you an idea of a comparison outside in natural light, um, how these look. And then on the back side, you see the purple is more evident on the back of the helmet there. Um, not as much on the figure here in the first one. So you can see there's definitely, you know, it's not 100% either way. Um, I just think that there was definitely an exaggeration made uh, for those. And you know what? If this is a figure that came at the wrong time for you financially and you weren't able to afford it, that's perfectly fine. But I think a lot of people were just crapping on this figure really for no reason whatsoever and kind of making up excuses of not buying it. It's one thing if you just can't afford it right now because things are coming out at the wrong time. That's fine. But like I said, the crap on a figure for no reason, this thing's a home run. I absolutely love this figure. And if you're someone that's getting this, um, you're going to be absolutely happy to have this in your collection as your main RoboCop representation. So I think it's a home run. It's a great pickup, you know, great representing these ADIPs. Absolutely love it so much. I don't think Hot Toys does it enough. But like I said, let me know what you think. Drop a like on this video and please consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments. Is this something that you got, you got and you're so happy with? Or did you end up passing on this? And let me know in the comments. But until then, this is Mr. Mama Collectibles with another review. Thank you so much for your support. I will see you in the next video. Take care.